لئی یسطن کے فل مسیح ہو ان یکون عبدن للہ مسیح is not going to feel it a humiliation that he is an عبد of اللہ neither محمد feels it to be a humiliation we testify along with prophethood and messengerhood نشہدو اللہ الہ الا اللہ وحدہ لا شریک اللہ ونشہدو ان محمد عبدہ ورسول Rather, the more emphasis is on Abduhu. At so many places in Quran, you will find, you know, Abduhu mentioned, not Rasuluhu. Subhanallah, the asra bi abdihi laylam min al-masjid al-haram ila al-masjid al-aqsa. Alhamdulillah, the one who has given on Abduhu the book and has not given it to him. Tabarak, the one who has given the Furqan on Abduhu to be the one who has given it to him. So this Abd, Abd, Digar, Abduhu, Chide Digar. But I don't have time to translate this couplet. Even, you know, the angels who are very close and very near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they don't feel ashamed, they don't feel humiliated that they are the abds, they are the bondsmen, they are the slaves of Allah. Whosoever, feels ashamed in the bondsmanship of Allah. Whosoever feels that it is humiliating for him that he be, regard, he be regarded as a bondsman to Allah, as a servant to Allah. فَسَيَحْشُرُهُمْ إِلَيْهِ جَمِيعًا So Allah will gather them together before him. They will have to come to him. If they feel it to be humiliated, well, they will have the humiliation on the day of judgment. فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ so as for those who had believed and done good deeds, He will pay them their rewards in full. Adding to them yet more out of his bounty. And as for those who felt ashamed to be servants of Allah and who became arrogant then Allah will chastise them punish them with a very painful chastisement painful punishment and they won't be able to find for them against Allah this doon you know this can be translated in many ways except Allah but here this proper word is against Allah. They will not be able to find any protector, any helper against Allah. Ya Yuhannas. Now this is, so to say, the end of the surah. Qad jaakum burhanum min rabbikum wa anzalna ilaykum nuram mubina. O mankind, a clear sign and proof has come to you. That clear sign and proof is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who is himself a burhan. Kirdar me guftar me Allah ki burhan. Allah ma iqbal uses these words for bandai momin. Kirdar me guftar me Allah ki burhan. So if a momin is a burhan. Well Muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the completest burhan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ قَدْ جَاءَكُمْ بُرْهَانٌ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكُمْ نُورًا مُبِينًا And we have sent down to you a very shining light. That shining light is this. Burhan is Muhammad. رَسُولٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ يَتْلُوا صُحُفًا مُطَهَّرَةً فِيهَا كُتُبٌ قَيِّمًا لَمْ يَكُنِ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ وَالْمُشْرِكِينَ رَسُولٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ يَتْلُو صُحُفًا مُطَحَّرَةً فِيهَا كُتُبٌ قَيِّمًا Here the Rasool is Burhan and the book that is the Noor. وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكُمْ نُورًا مُبِينًا We have sent down. Nuzul is for Quran. A light which is very shining. Very manifest light. فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَاعْتَصَمُوا بِهِ Now as for those who believe in him who have faith in him, who have accepted him as their leader, as their guide, as their mentor. 
وَاعْتَصَمُوا بِهِ and have clung to him who have believed in Allah and has clung to Allah hold fast to Allah hold fast to Allah believing in him holding fasting to Allah holding fast to his deen holding fast to Allah holding fast to his rope to his cable and that rope and cable is Quran وَاعْتَصَمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا and the Prophet said هُوَ حَبْلُ اللَّهِ الْمَتِينَ according to a hadith narrated by Hazrat Ali رضي الله تعالى and in another hadith narrated by Abdullah ibn Mas'ud Al-Quran wa hablullah al-mamdud min as-sama'il al-ard this Quran is a rope of Allah which is stretching between the earth and the skies and heavens and in another hadith the wordings are tarafuhu bi yadikum wa tarafuhu bi yadillah it is such a rope that one end of that rope is in your hands and the other end of the rope is in the hands of Allah tarafuhu bi yadikum wa tarafuhu bi yadillah فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَقَصَمُوا بِهِ فَسَيُدْخِلُهُمْ فِي رَحْمَةٍ مِّنْهُ He will make them enter. He will admit them to his mercy. وَفَضْلٍ and his bounty. This rahma is for forgiveness. If they had some shortcomings, some bad deeds also, the rahma will wipe it out. And the fuzzle is the bounties of Jannah. سَيُدْخِلُهُمْ فِي رَحْمَةٍ مِّنْهُ وَفَضْلٍ وَيَحْدِهِمْ إِلَيْهِ سِرَاطَ مُسْتَقِيمًا And he will guide them, lead them إِلَيْهِ يَحْدِهِمْ إِلَيْهِ Towards Allah. Note it. This is called سلوك. What is سلوك? What is طريقت? تَقَرُّبْ إِلَى اللَّهِ You want to be nearer and nearer and nearer and closer and closer and closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But to become closer and closer to Allah, you need a path. That is called suluk. That is called tariqat. That is called shariat. There is no difference between shariat. Share means path. Tariq means path. This is only the two aspects of that path. The legal side, the external side is shariat. The inner side, the hidden side is tariqa. Shariat tells you how to pray. And tariqat will tell you what should you feel when you are praying. You are standing, you have folded your hands, you have gone bowed down in ruku, you are prostrating in sujood. It is a sharia. But you know your whole personality is going before Allah. You are really submitting. Do you really feel you are in the presence of Allah? Do you really have a direct conversation with Allah? That is the tariqah. So sharia and tariqah together. The only difference is the external, visible side, legal side, fiqhi side is sharia. The internal, the real essence, the real spirit of these things, that, that is dealt by tariqah. فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَاقَصَمُوا بِهِ فَسَيُدْخِلُهُمْ فِي رَحْمَةٍ مِّنْهُ فَضْلٍ وَيَهْدِيهِمْ إِلَيْهِ Siratam Mustaqima. He will guide them to a straight path leading towards Him. Now the surah has ended. Only one appendix. This ayah, you know, it is the appendix. Ayah number 176. A question about the law of inheritance. Just where we had, you know, some instructions in the first section of the surah about women, about orphans, orphan girls. But there were certain questions about doing justice between the wives if you have more than one wife. About those also there were questions. Those questions were later on explained. Now again there was the law of inheritance about kalala. Some instructions came. Now there was a question. Yes, taftunaka. Oh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They want a proclamation and a pronouncement from you. They are wanting a fatwa from you. Qul illahu yuftikum fil kalala. Say to them, when Allah is pronouncing and Allah is giving you the verdict about kalala. Allah wants to remove your doubts or misunderstandings about kalala. In imramun halaka, laysa lahu waladun wa lahu ukhtun. If somebody dies, some person, he doesn't have any 
parent not any son or daughter he is called the kalala now if he has a wife wife will get one fourth to whom shall three fourth go <coughs> wife can get only one fourth to whom will th three fourth go to the brothers and sisters they are called zawil arham zawil farais zawil farais are only three parents father mother group together and the progeny sons and daughters and wife and husband they are double farais their portions in the inheritance are fixed by allah subhanahu wa taala in his book in the second section of surah an-nisa in very profound ayat only two ayat and it gives the full law of inheritance now if something remains or in this case when there are no parents they had already died there are no children surviving maybe they were they died before the death of this person or he was issueless now if there is a wife she will get one fourth three fourth will go where and if the other wife also doesn't exist then who will inherit the brothers and the sisters now what will happen these brothers and sisters will behave just as sons and daughters behaved in the law of inheritance what is it if there was one son he would inherit the whole if one daughter she would inherit half if two or more than two daughters they will be equally divided between them in the two third such law was given in the beginning and that is the same case for the real brothers and sisters there in the second section the commandment was given for akhlafi step brothers and sisters and i told you that in arabic custom when father is common in respective of whether the mother is also common or mothers are different they are called real brothers they are equal in status no difference although there are two terms aini aini are those where father and mother are both common allati allati are those brothers and sisters who have a common father but different mothers the third is akhlafi mother is common fathers are different akhlafi so if they are akhlafi brethren or sisters or brothers the law is given in the very beginning in the second section of surah an-nisa but people were bewildered what about the real ones so this real one is given here walahu ukhtun falahan nisfu ma tarak just as a single daughter could have inherited only half so if a single sister is there real any or allati she will inherit only half wa huwa yarisuha illam yakul laha walad and if a woman dies without any aulad without any progeny and parents and he has a as she has a brother brother will inherit full whole of it just as the son you know if he was alone the only son he would have inherited the whole of it so if there is only one brother he will have the total inheritance if the sister then half fa in kanat asnatain falahuma sulusan if they are only sisters and they are two or more than two then you know they will have two third mimma tarak or whatever he has left wa in kanu ikhwatan wa rijalan wa nisan and if there are brothers and sisters both fali zakar mislu hazul unsayan the same wordings with which that, that law started you see kumullah fi auladihi li zakar mislu hazul unsayan so if there are brothers and sisters now the whole thing will be divided according to that rule that for each male will be the portion equal to two females yubayyinu llahu lakum an tadillu allah is making it explaining it clearly to you lest you should go astray although you could deduce it from there also allah had not gone into detail because you could use your own intellect to understand it but because you couldn't understand it and it may be that you might commit a mistake so allah subhanahu wa taala has made it clear that that order or commandment or instruction was for akhlafi brothers and sisters for anis for allatis where where a father is common the same law will apply as is the law about the sons and daughters 
انت دلو يبين الله لكم انت دلو والله بكل شيء عليم and verily Allah, Allah knows everything بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وياكم بالآيات والذكر الحكيم